So, let's have a real conversation about probably the most asked question when it comes to being a game dev. Now just to be clear, I am not gonna sugarcoat anything, because I think there's enough channels out there that are already trying to sell you the dream. So today I wanted to teach you about something that most channels won't tell you, which is what awaits you at the end of your crazy journey if you manage to perform the miracle of finishing your game. Now if you're lucky, then maybe you broke even. Or maybe you even made it big and your game is popping wish lists left and right. But if you're average, like I am, then you're probably gonna end up like the vast majority of indie game devs out there, which is five years later, in debt, with maybe 20 copies sold, and bills piling up all around you faster than you can chug a beer. This is exactly what happened to me, and many other devs that I know. And I truly hope that none of you are in this situation right now, but if it is, I'll tell you how I got out of it, and maybe you'll have a chance to fix your life a lot earlier than I could. First thing you have to understand is that there is no correlation between how difficult or how much time you spend on something and the customer's perceived value of it. If I spend 10 years making garbage and then tell someone, hey, you need to buy this from me for five bucks because I think it's worth that much and I've worked on it for 10 years, the person's gonna look me in the eye and tell me to go fuck off, as they probably should because nobody is obligated to buy something just because it was difficult to create. The second thing that you have to understand is video games is probably one of the worst return on investment out of any commodity you could pick. Let's just say that you have a small team of two programmers and one 3D artist. And let's assume that you're gonna go to the market for literally everything else. So all the special effects, all the music, all the sounds, you're gonna get from the marketplace somewhere. Now the average game programmer's salary is about $92,000 a year. The average 3D modeler's salary is about $77,000 a year. Now let's say that your project will be done in one year, which is not realistic at all, but let's just pretend it was. So for one year of work, you are already down $2,600,000. And we haven't even talked about your expenses for the licensing of the software like Substance Painter, Fruity Loops, ZBrush, Photoshop, or food, or rent. You are starting your journey at around $2,600,000 in debt. And a year later, when you're finally done, assuming you had no setbacks, if your game was small and compact like most indie games, then you might be able to sell it for five bucks, maybe 10 per copy at most, which is already a tiny fraction of what it costs to build. And even then, people will still complain and compare it to their favorite free-to-play game and ask you, why is your game so expensive? But my point is, you can see the ridiculous disconnect between what you are allowed to charge people and how much it costs to make the product. Again, if you're making games for fun, then this doesn't really apply to you. But if you're trying to make money, then you need to at least be aware of what's going on here. Because when I figured this out, it was too late. I had already lost all the best years of my life in my early 20s, college was over, I didn't have much professional experience. All I had to show for it was a game that really wasn't selling any copies. And I had to start figuring something out really fast because it was pretty clear to me that there was no miracle going to happen. No big streamer was gonna play my game. There was not gonna be any random spike in sales. And I just had to accept that I spent the last five years of my life in order to not even be able to pay for a month of rent. So, after a monumental failure, as any normal depressed 3D artist would, I just took a week off and made art for a few days. For me, character design has always been my hobby horse. It's never been my best skill, but it's something that just calms my mind whenever I'm feeling lost. And while I was 3D modeling, I was on art station looking for assets for my characters, and it was here that I realized something that was gonna change my whole perspective on this. See, I was practicing making fantasy 3D characters, and I was looking for the typical fantasy weapons. So for example, stuff like swords, shields, axes, bows, hammers, you know, all the usual fantasy RPG stuff. And I found some really cool stuff. For example, 100 medieval swords for $12. Now I personally bought the commercial licenses because I like to be able to sell my stuff later, but when I bought this pack, I was super happy because as a 3D modeler, I know how much work goes into making one of these swords. When you add all the time it takes to design, plan, and then actually model the sword, it would easily add up to two to four hours per model which would be months of work at a minimum. So I already knew that $12 for 100 swords was a pretty good f***ing deal. And then it hit me. Wait a second. My entire game costs five bucks. And this pack of swords costs more than double the cost of my game. Just the swords. No textures, no programming, no music, no UI, no sound. Literally just a bunch of OBJ files for swords. 
Now I know this pack took a lot of work to create, but I also know it didn't take as long to make as my game. And that's when I realized that the assets used to create the game separately are worth more than the game itself. And that is when I completely changed my strategy for selling my games. Instead of making a bunch of stuff and trying to sell it at the end of the game's production, it's actually much easier to sell the pieces of your game as you are making it. Like in one of my later games, Macrophage, which is pretty small, and when it was over, I decided to test and just separate the assets into small packs and see if I could make a little bit of extra money on the side. So I turned all the guns that I made into a anime sci-fi weapons pack. Then I turned all the bad guy weapons into an alien weapons pack. And then I put all the bad guys together and I turned them into a alien enemy army pack. And I just set a price according to what I saw other people charge online. Pretty simple strategy, but my idea was, hey, these serve me really well in my game, but maybe someone else also needs anime style weapons or alien enemies in their project. Who knows? I'll just put the pack out there and see what happens. And of course, to nobody's surprise, the packs for these separate assets are way easier to sell and made me more money than the game ever would. So my recommendation to you, if you actually want to make something and not starve to death while you're building your game, is sell the pieces of your game while you are making them. I'm not saying it's going to make you rich, but it's just a way for you to potentially make some change to keep you alive while your project is not complete yet. And you don't have to be an artist to do this either. You could be a programmer too. Like if you created some code that does something useful, like just shows the enemy's health bar, people like me would instantly pay 10 bucks to just buy it and just quickly add it to our game. I think one of the best real life examples of this was when I purchased an aiming system for the code that intercepts and hits moving targets. Like, I'm not a math guy, so there was no way I was ever going to figure out the formula and the code to have a bullet hit a moving target. But this guy on the Unity Asset Store just sold it for 15 bucks. And because he had that code on the marketplace, I worked an extra two hours at Chick-fil-A, and that was enough for me to buy the asset. And that code became the heart of every weapon system that was in my game. If he didn't have that code on the market, then I would have never been able to have the gameplay where an AI could hit a moving target. If you're an environment guy and you just finished making a beach level, then make a beach pack, you know, with sand textures and palm tree objects and rocks and maybe some water materials. If you're a sound guy and you just finished making some gun sounds for an alien army, make an alien army sound pack. If you're a programmer and you just made some cool code that just shows a radar with the enemy's position, just sell the radar code. So whatever cool stuff you make, maybe it's environment stuff or character stuff or special effects stuff or sound effects or just code. If it's good enough for you, it might actually be good enough for someone else too. And if you put something on the shop and it doesn't do well, it's not the end of the world. You can always look back and improve it later. But the key is to think small. Organize the stuff that you were going to make anyway, and then optimize it to the point where you could see yourself buying something like it because you know how much time it would save you in the future. And I'll end the video with a real example. One thing I personally always hated as a 3D modeler was spending time creating armor ornamental curves. Every single one of my game characters today has them, but I've always hated how long it took to design and fit them into a character quickly. I actually purchased and tried many different ornamental curve brushes from the store. Some of them were better than others, but nothing really fit exactly what I needed. And I always found myself going back to the three major classic designs, even within packs that had hundreds of different options. So I took a few days to create the exact kind of ornamental curves that I thought would be perfect for classic medieval fantasy design. And I turned them into a pack, and to this day, my ornamental curve brush pack is more constantly popular on the shop than any of my games will probably ever be. And just to prove it so you guys know I'm not talking out of my ass here, here is literally how much I made this month. And you can see, I've got a bunch of different assets here on the shop, but for this month, the things that I ended up selling most were belt curves, anime hair curves, and ornamental brush curves. This is not what I thought I was going to be selling at this point in my career, but sometimes I guess that's just how the world works. When you put all this stuff together in a game, it's worth five bucks. But when you take it apart and sell each item separately, it's worth 20 to $30 a piece. And like I said, this is not a get rich quick scheme. It's just a little bit of extra change that I can use to slowly pay off my student loans. Whatever you do, just do the best you can. Clean it up, optimize it, and then make it available for other devs who also might need it. Good luck out there.
And just remember, you're not alone here. If you ever want to chill with some others who are on the same journey, just consider dropping by the Discord. We'd love to have you aboard, but regardless, hope that helps. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around. Oh, <laughs>